So now I want to talk about different variable types, at least for integers or anything related to math. Uh, for now, we've been using plain int for integer. Uh, as you can see, I don't know if you can see the comment, but it says, please do not use this. Uh, from now on in my uh, little guide and tutorial walkthrough of C++, uh, I will no longer be using int a. It's not specific enough. Just saying integer, you know, it could take up this much space when in fact we have a number that's uh, really small and we don't need to take up that much RAM. So this is going to go away. Now I declared a few variables here and uh, I left comments here so you uh, this is also the first time you're seeing comments. I believe it's uh, forward slash. And basically what happens is this is just for the programmer. The computer compiler uh, won't read it. So it's going to go through, it's going to go line 1, line 2, line 3, line 4, line 5, line 6, line 7. And it's going to go line 8 and it's going to stop there after that semicolon and it's going to go next. This is just here for uh, the programmer, us humans, to know what the heck we just did. Or just to write uh, a comment, which is specifically what double slash, double forward slashes are for. So now you're probably going to look, okay, well I see he has integer, so I know it's going to be a number, but what do he what the heck does like unsigned, signed, short, long mean? Well, here's what it means. Unsigned means that your integer can only start at zero and go up, no negative numbers. And short caps out at about 65,000, uh, at the value of 65,000. So, okay, so to go from an unsigned short integer can go from zero to about 65,000. Now, an unsigned long integer, as you could probably expect, starts at zero and goes all the way up to like, what, four, billion something so almost four billion three hundred million so yeah um, that's a really big number and the reason we want to be uh, accurate is well what happens if we only need to store say numbers between 0 and 50 we do want to take up this this much space it's sort of like having a box and you're only going to put, and it's the boxes, let's say the size of your living room. If you're only going to put crayons in there and you have like 40 crayons, it's kind of a waste of space. And it's the same thing with uh, system memory or RAM. It's going to take up all that space for nothing. So we want to be descriptive. Well, what happens if we need negative numbers? For negative numbers, we have something called signed. And um, as you probably guessed, since it's short, it's a total of 60 about 65,000 but now we split it in half and say well half is going to go on the negative side and half is going to go on the positive side now you probably notice that the negative side is slightly larger like larger by one than the positive side and that's because um, this is technically one through this number and we count zero as a positive uh, just in case you're wondering so like zero through nine we have ten digits so zero is a positive number. Then we have a signed long which kind of does about the same thing except it splits up that four billion into a uh, half so you now have negative two billion on one side and positive two billion on the other. So okay that's all fine and dandy. So then we go to float. Float is kind of special because um, let's say you need uh, fractions or uh, a ratio, and by ratio I mean like let's say 5.33 or like 7 thirds. So float lets us do this. Just regular float with uh, a variable has about 7 digits of accuracy. Okay. Then we have a double, which is technically double float, but we just call it double. And uh, it has the same thing, lets you express fractional and ratios, except you can see the degrees of accuracy has increased. Now, by degrees of accuracy, I mean if we were to write pi out, like 3.14, blah, 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 this would stop at around 7 digits. This would stop at around 15, and otherwise you start getting errors, because there's something in your 
computer processor called an FPU, which basically just does math. Uh, we then have a long double. Now, you're probably saying, what the heck? You know, it's still 15 degrees of accuracy, but uh, what's the difference between this and this if, like, it's the same? Well, the reason being is that with long, it's going to force a higher number of uh, significant figures. So if you have, like, 3.14, it's going to force, like, 3.1456. And uh, one thing to note is if you must add an L after your number. So... Here I have some output. Uh, this is just uh, output, and then text A is variable A and line go further. Now let's write this uh, a few more times for F, G, and H. So go ahead, copy and paste three times, and we're just gonna go ahead and change our variables to F, G, H and go ahead and change the output of text as well to match up F G H okay so now let's actually declare some variables so we're done with that so if you remember from the last video we could do um, we can assign our variables uh, numbers so let's say A is 19 B of course now we know we're limited at around 65,000 so let's say like 23, 24, 20,400 there we go that's good enough also um, notice how there's no space in between the sign operator and the numbers and the variable uh, you could leave it like that if you want it's just gonna make it harder for you to read though and by that I mean it's gonna everything's gonna look smushed together uh, otherwise the program compiles the exact same way with or without spaces when you have operators um, let's go ahead and assign C now this could be a big number let's do like four four I don't know four hundred four million I need one more zero Whoa. there we go four million and one and again semicolon now let's do D. As you can see, D is a signed short end. So now we can actually do negative numbers. So let's do negative 2,500. We could do uh, assign E now. Now E could be a big uh, negative number. So let's go ahead and do uh, negative. What? Let's do just do negative 4 million one again. So it's easy. Okay, now let's actually try doing a float. So for float, what happens if we try... Hmm, let's actually try A divided by B. And since you guys learned about the basic operators in the last section, you guys should know what this does. It's going to assign F, and it's going to be 19 divided by this number, which is going to be kind of ridiculous. So let's try, um, I don't know, C, wait, no, G, double. So let's go ahead and set G equal to exactly the same thing. Or, yeah, just as an example so you guys can see it, let's do the same thing. And then H, we're going to have to type out manually because it needs a uh, L at the end of the number. So let's go ahead and set it to... Um, I don't know, 658, 6589.8563246, blah, 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 L. Okay, so I know it's strange having an L, but that's just the way it works. So let's see if we have at least 15, 2, 4, 1, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Yep, okay, we're good. Let's go ahead and compile and run this and see what we get out of our computer. Now, it's quite possible that H, because um, it's a long double float, 
I believe you're going to run into issues with a uh, rounding error, especially on your computer processor. Sort of like how what happened here. With FNG, you tried to get a number too small. So let's actually switch in and get uh, B divided by A. So let's try that instead. This should give a real number out. Go ahead and build and run again. And as you can see, now we get real numbers. Okay, so we got 1073 and 1073. Uh, nothing you could really do about it. So, the degrees of accuracy is sort of up to your computer. Um, depends how your uh, FPU and how old your processor is and how accurate you can get. But we can. I'm curious if that number actually goes in the perfect amount of times. Maybe we just ran into a bad example. Uh, what was it? B divided by A, so we got 2400 divided by 19. See, there you go. Your number has so many trailing numbers, just sort of like pi, where it's going to stop somewhere and it's just going to say, okay, this is such a stupid number, we're just going to round up because your computer processor is going to take the time to do that because this is just your basic standard library since we're using uh, namespace standard um, there are math libraries that will push this out further and we'll get into that in the more advanced section So, also when you're exiting your uh, program and this is called the console window it's a command prompt just in case you guys want to know a little bit of terminology don't click X uh, always click inside and click enter and then enter because what happens is if you don't do that you actually get um, terminated unexpectedly down here and it's actually uh, technically bad for computer programs to do that you actually want to uh, exit normally and not just be like okay this is done I'm gonna take it out of RAM unexpectedly this is actually gonna say okay uh, because what happens is it never got to this return zero and return zero means return control back to the system instead of the program keeping it and so you can see where that could cause a problem so uh, that wraps up this section about uh, uh, what is this this is um, math functions 2.0 I guess so with variables and variable names so thanks for watching uh, Please like uh, and subscribe, uh, leave a comment down below in case you guys want to see something new or want to ask questions. Uh, thanks for watching and have a great day.